Today on Categorical Imperatives, we need to talk about stopping Joe Biden's ridiculous travel ban. Hey, greetings, and welcome back once again to Categorical Imperatives. As always, I am your host, Lockheed Liberal, and I do want to thank you all so much for joining me here today. Now, if you are new to the program, I would especially like to welcome you. This is a podcast where we're going to be using legal theory and moral philosophy to discuss current events related to law, politics, and culture. So we need to talk about this travel ban and how experience shows that what little good is done by them, if there is any at all, is outweighed immensely by the cruel harm they do. Now, I, I know what you're probably all thinking out there. You're probably saying to yourself, well, don't you remember how Donald Trump's travel bans on China and Europe kept the initial COVID out of the United States? about how his continued travel bans combined with his massive Title 42 border expulsion program and his restrictive immigration policies uh, kept out those more contagious Alpha and Delta variants of the disease? Now, if you don't recall those things, it's because they didn't happen. Those policies failed, and the virus entered the U.S. anyway. Now, I know, I know what you're saying to yourself, but at least in all fairness, the travel bans delayed the spread of COVID long enough that we were far better prepared when the variants in question did arrive to handle them. If you don't recall that, because sadly, no, that didn't happen either. It did not delay them briefly, if at all. And there is little evidence we really gained much as a result. By contrast, we do know that COVID travel bans have inflicted immense harm on millions of people around the world. They have separated numerous families, prevented loved ones from seeing each other in times of need, and cut off many thousands of people from valuable job opportunities. To the extent these travel bans have also uh, included severe migration restrictions, they have also done quite a bit to damage our economies and actually imperiled long-term improvements in health care by blocking migrants who are likely to contribute to scientific and medical innovations. Now, defenders of the travel bans will cite Australia as an example of a successful travel ban, but to the extent that they succeeded, it was only by combining it with a brutally harsh restriction on internal freedom of movement and civil liberties. They went full fucking fascist in Australia. That's what it took to get this done. And even Australia failed to stop the Delta variant. Today, Australian officials openly admit that they were not able to prevent it. Now, officials in the United States from President Biden on down also admit that they will not be able to keep the new variant out. The sad history is that many public health experts who have in the past tended to be very enthusiastic about a wide range of COVID restrictions are opposing this recent travel ban, including people like former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb, who wrote a, a leading book about the pandemic, and he argued that this travel ban would not only be unhelpful, but counterproductive. Gottlieb said, quote, it's counterproductive in the short and long run to impose harsh travel restrictions on affected countries, hurting current containment efforts and discouraging future sharing, end quote. And he went on to say, quote, too much of what we don't, we, too much we don't know to impose economically and socially ruinous policies, end quote. Basically, ready, fire, aim is not a prudent public health policy. Now, all, outright travel bans will hurt more than they help. Imposing travel bans on countries that reveal new variants can create incentives to avoid sharing information, covering up the existence of a variant until after it's already spread from its origins and makes it difficult to trace. In theory, governments could potentially impose very brief travel bans when a potentially dangerous new variant is detected, 
just long enough to do some useful research and preparation so they can remove the ban once, as inevitably occurs, it is no longer meaningful to contain the spread of the disease. In this way, I, we could maximize the gains from travel bans while minimizing the pain, and while that sort of system might work under some kind of well-informed benevolent des despot, unfortunately, governments are in short supply on benevolent despots. Governments are not immune to political pressures, and they never scrupulously weigh costs and benefits. In the real world, governments rarely have good information when a new disease or variant first emerges, and once instituted, travel bans and associated migration restrictions tend to remain in place for many months past the point where there is any chance they might actually do any good. The bans instituted in response to the initial COVID crisis remained in place long after both the original and the later variants got in and achieved a community spread throughout Europe and North America. Political incentives kept them in place. For some on the right, the COVID crisis was a good excuse to impose severe migration restrictions of a kind that they had long advocated for. On the left and center, many politicians feared to look soft on COVID, perpetuating border closures, making it easier to send the signal that the government is taking the crisis seriously. Politicians and bureaucrats of all stripes are all too willing to inflict pain of a kind that disproportionately falls on recent immigrants, foreign workers, and families, and people with little or no political influence. Such dynamics might be less of a problem if voters were knowledgeable about the border closures and related COVID policies and effectively punish politicians who overstepped their authority. However, widespread public ignorance inhibits such monitoring here, as it does on many other policy issues as well. Really, in sum, ideal governments could perhaps be trusted with the power to close borders at any time a new variant or disease threat emerges. And the ones we actually have, though, not so much. I mean, it is tempting to say that on travel bans and other public health measures, we should just defer to the scientists and other health care experts. If they say travel bans are justified, then we should assume they are. But the merits of travel bans, like other severe restrictions on liberty, do not depend on technical scientific consideration alone. They have a moral, a social, and an economic dimension that cannot be overlooked. On these sorts of questions, scientists aren't the experts. Indeed, they often know less than other specialists in other fields. When it comes to travel bans, the latter include people with expertise in the value of international migration and freedom of movement, and also those that have conducted research on the ways in which political ignorance may inhibit carefully calibrated, quote, scientific policies. Now, it is noteworthy that many public health specialists have themselves begun to doubt the value of COVID travel bans. When people with different types of expertise begin to converge on similar conclusions, that can be a helpful, though still not an infallible, sign of where the truth lies. Really, in sum, the current round of travel bans should be swiftly lifted, in medium to long term. The power to impose such travel bans should either be abolished or at least tightly circumscribed. Doing this will not be easy, but it may be the only way to forestall further massively cruel harm of the sort that we have already seen and experienced over the last two years. All right, well, anyways, that's all I really got for you guys today. I know it's kind of a short one here, but I just wanted to uh, get that out. I've got some other videos I'm working on. They'll be out uh, in the next coming days here, so I'll be looking out for those. Uh, if you like the content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment if you want. If you like it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. You know, all that good shit. Uh, if you want to support the show, there's links to Patreon, PayPal, all that stuff down in the description. And if you can't uh, do that, 
I understand. That's all right. I appreciate you coming by and spending some of your time here with me today all the same. So, uh, until next time, I have been uh, Locking Liberal for Categorical Imperatives, talking about stupid travel bans, and of course, as always, Delenda S. Carthago.